welcome to the Life at Thanksgiving practice. Thank you all for being here today. We are going to use a chair, a block, and a strap in our 45-minute practice. I want to start with a reading for the day. We are going to connect this Thanksgiving week with the Sanskrit word in yoga, which is sadhana. Sadhana means a methodical discipline to attain a desired knowledge or goal. It's built on the idea of a daily spiritual practice, a committed prayer, a routine that you do for yourself to nurture your body and your mind. Yoga is not a destination, but a path. It is a tool that pauses time, expands your mind, guides your tranquility, despite the chaos around you. This is the basic principle of sadhana. It is a practice, and it is available to you anytime, anywhere. So let us remember that as we begin our practice today, recognizing the myriad of emotion that comes in our Thanksgiving week and what we have as accessible tools from our yoga practice. Let us start this way, back of the hands together. And as we take the arms to this expansion, we're gonna to return to that place, back of the hands together. Nice. We're gonna to come to the same place behind us, inhaling to take the arms back. Beautiful. Exhaling to return. As we take the arms wide, we're going to rotate the fingertips back. Any amount more, whether they can turn down, and then lift the arms. As we lift the arms, we can feel the lift of the rib cage. So with our breath, we're going to guide, inviting the arms back. Lifting any amount more. Inviting the arms back. Lifting any amount more. And then pausing to feel this great full rib cage. Bring the hands to this straight position overhead. We're going to use this as we stand as well. Anytime we are standing, if you wish to sit, all of what we do can be done from sitting. If you notice the lift of the rib cage and then bring the hands together, you might find, if this is comfortable, that you can continue to lift the rib cage that little bit more. A wonderful way to warm up the spine or rib cage and core, not just the shoulders. Take the time to return in the reverse and then to bring the back of the hands together. This time, if you'll take the arms wide, we're going to complement movements. So my arms are in a T position. We're going to think about that word, thanks, T. And while the arms are reaching, if we can engage all the muscles to hug the bones, we do this in our warrior two practice and think about how we expand. While we're here, we'll take a break, turning the palms up, dropping the elbows and the shoulder blades. So using that tool of backing off to be able to do more, turn the palms down and keep reaching and then slide one foot underneath you so that you're pressing down and then back. As you are ready to take that break, drop the elbows and then slide the other foot back and go this one last time. So our arms are in this T position, T that starts off that word, thanks. In yoga, T is, uh, this boat, this shape is tadasana, it is mountain pose. As you cross the arms, this time press away. We're going to use this mudra that gives us a chance to press away negativity. That is our number, our end. And with that in mind, we're going to continue to draw the elbows back, palms up, crossing the other arm above to get to that same place. I want to press away what is negative and make space for what is a fullness and expansiveness, what we want to say yes to. Beautiful. 
from here, this last repeat of T in our word thanks, this Tadasana. In yoga, in mountain pose, we say that all poses want to be Tadasana. The actions of this pose, if we apply them in all poses, then it turns on some primary actions. Take the arms behind you now, and let's have a recovery. Come into this hip hinge. Slide one foot underneath. Allow your head to turn in one direction, looking down and back. Charge the legs and feel your core. Notice that although a shape might make you think that the movement is aimed for a certain area of your body, you turn your head and look down and back in the other direction, that yoga is really a practice that is comprehensive and not just in our poses. Bring your head back to center and swing your arms down and through, forward and up, use this to rise any amount and then work your way back. Wonderful. Swing the arms back as you slide your legs to exactly the same thing on the other side. So we're going to use this to come and stand. At first, there is traction for the neck and the shoulders. If we turn our head in one direction, we find it along one side of the neck a little bit more. We'll talk ourselves into how the fingers hold on and everything else lets go in the upper body. Turn your head in the other direction, getting time for the release, release of balance. As you inhale and come back to center, again, if you will, reach the arms actively through this range. And as you come to that place that is yours, charge the legs and come out of the chair. This time we're going to continue all the way up and we're going to invite feet apart. A slight bend of the knees, so a similar place of symmetry in this powerful pose. We had that T face. Here is our H. It's going to translate to heart opening. As you inhale, come up right, drop your elbows to a goal post position, and then make your feet a little bit wider. We're going to take this with variation and with repetition, and here we are. Maybe the width of our mat turned out. If I come into this knee bend now, it's not important to go low, but to keep aiming into the back body, that means I want to draw the elbows back. As I inhale and take the arms up, here comes that H again, and we're going to gravitate toward that A, arms together, and then lifting the ribs a little bit more, these ways that continue to open the heart, open the chest. Here we are back to our age. And if you will, this time swing your arms down and back as you come and stand, if you can clasp them together. And as you stand, notice the position of your feet. And if you could charge the legs to press down and out while you aim to counterbalance by zipping up the inner thigh. So we have an A in this position as well. How about that? Affirmations, something that opens the heart. As you walk your feet in, we'll stand behind the chair, but the chair will be turned to the side on our mat. That is how I am aiming to set up and that I encourage you to aim for so that we use the length of the mat. So as you place your fingers at, at the top of the chair, the chair is facing away from you, at least two legs of the chair on the mat. We'll step our feet apart. And I am starting this this way just to show you how I am using my sticky mat, the length of the mat, but I might change my alignment to be able to stay with the friends on the screen. At first, I want to turn one foot out. And my legs have this uh, uh, inverted V sort of shape. And I'll bend in that knee that is that belongs to that turned out leg. And notice that I can still stay centered between my feet. We're coming into that warrior two position. Taking the arms wide. Beautiful. 
So as you come and go from this position, the coming, the going, moves the upper body while the foundation stays set. We're going to lengthen to one side and then inhale and come up right. And holding the arms in this position it becomes tedious. Just rest your hands and focus on the length of the torso to lengthen and to come and go. What I am aiming to manage is to not shift the foundation. So your foundation is set. And we can repeat this also from leg straight position. So we're going to back off and continue. If I straighten the front leg, then that will change what happens here. The inner hip will shift the pelvis to one side and we'll continue onward in this lengthening, this lateral work, inhaling to come up. Let's try that two more times. And the idea as we get there and pause is to really charge the legs and lengthen the spine. Inhale, come up right. We'll try that one more time. And as we do, we might find that there's a little bit more give through this inner thigh. Yeah? As you inhale and come up, we're going to take the arm that belongs to the back leg straight up. We're going to take the arm that belongs to the front leg to mirror it. And that is our K. Thanks. Our K today is for kindness. When we heard this question asked of the Dalai Lama, what religion do you practice? The answer was kindness. As you relax, revolve your feet. And that means you will shift the other leg to a turned out position, the back foot into a slightly turned in position, bending in the front knee, taking the arms wide, and using this warrior two to lengthen and return. Can we move with the breath? Can we lengthen our breath so that our movement is slow and controlled and we can appreciate how our practice is comprehensive? Just like our gratitude practice, just like our Thanksgiving practice. Straightening the front leg and continuing on. You might want to explore what happens when you focus on a certain part, shifting the pelvis, how it talks to everything else. Inhale, come on up. Exhale to you there. <clears throat> Make any adjustments along the way so you get used to how each side is a little different. Inhale, come up right. And always be true to yourself. One more time. As you make your way back from the legs. And then the arm that belongs to the back leg, straight up. The arm that belongs to the front leg and mirrors that leg. And here is our K in the other direction. Reach everything away from the midline of the body. Feel how both the front and the back body are expanding. As you are ready, turn your feet so that they are now in a place of symmetry and you're still standing in the same place. Now our body's pose has a wider stance. So if you will, bend in your knees. And notice, again, it's not about how you can go. It is about staying in the back body, finding the width of the stance that is weak to you, your comfortable challenge. And I'm going to guide us at first while the hands rest at the back of the chair to lift the toes and spread them wide, just to feel what are we asking our foundation to do. As you rest your toes, consider lifting one heel. Notice how that leg adjusts from deep through to the core and rest the heel. Lift the other heel just to feel without bobbing up and down. What accommodates something we do all the time, every day, we adjust. Yogis are flexible in body and mind. If you're ready to add another layer, consider lifting both heels just to notice from way down here in God's pose how we can strengthen our foundation and then slowly set the heels down. Take a break and straighten the legs. Keep the legs firm, pushing the floor down and out. And while you're up here, if you will, take the arms to mirror, to counterbalance. So here we are, a star position. Yeah, you're the yoga star today. So the arms reach far away from the midsection, so do the legs, the spine extends. And we can return to that goal pose position, bending the knees, taking the elbows back. 
And as we pause here, we can consider lifting the toes if you prefer to hold the chair, please do. As you straighten the legs, this time rotate the arms down so the palms face the floor. Very nice. As you bend in the knees, again, take the arms back to their full height. While you're in this full post position, if you feel comfortable with taking one heel yet again, I'm going to ask you to turn your goal post upper body away from that lifted heel. So you're turning in the other direction, in the direction of the foot that is rounded. Nice. Inhale, come back to center. Rest your heel, straighten the legs, rotate the palms down. It's nice to have a recovery and then come back with great energy. Bend in the knees, return to the goal post, sort of like eating Thanksgiving dinner and then having a pause and deciding when to come back for more, right? Lifting the inner heel and turning the goal post of the body in the direction of the grounded leg. Very wonderful. We're now holding our breath. Inhale to return. Exhale, rest the heels and lower the eyes to come back. As you bring your feet in so they have sort of a pigeon toe turn in position, bear down. Give yourself a chance to strengthen this counterbalance. Now we have internal rotation. Bring the heels in so that your stance is shorter. Press it down and out. Notice what is different. It is only in our favor to have as much variety in our movement patterns, but as much variety that incorporates strengthening and such as life. Take the time and bring the feet in so they're coming closer toward the underneath you. They're still wider than the pelvis and bear down. Nothing fancy to do here, but just bear down and feel what turns on, what's bracing you, what is providing that movement. And then, Bring the heels in. Now that you're a little bit closer, similar to that place that we practiced before, a repetition of pressing down and out with the feet while zipping up the inner line, recruiting the inner leg muscles. We're standing a little bit taller in all of this. Wonderful. Relax. As you are ready to turn to the side, we'll bring the block into play. So our block is going to be low and there needs to be space in front and behind so I'm going to adjust my mat and pull it back so I can stay in the frame and follow as I am encouraging. What we'll try first the movement without the walk in case that is your preference and then with to we warmed up the um, lower body to the internal and external rotation, and we're going to put it into play. I want to take the outside leg and bring it up and across. The chair is here for you to hold on to. And then I'm going to take that leg behind and I can tap the floor so it comes behind to tap the floor. I can bend in the standing knee, I can slide it even further and think in terms of a curtsy. Let's try again. Any amount of this range, it could be small and it could be great depending on what is, as um, my chiropractor friend says, available today. Now, as you hold that knee up and somewhat to the side, let's pause and practice internal and external rotation in a way that is non-weight bearing, so there's freedom here in this hip to just feel what is available and step down. Same idea, stepping up onto the block. And as I step up onto the block, I want to bring that knee up and across. Not much difference here, but it affords us a chance to change what we're asking of the standing leg. I can come back behind, tap the floor without bending too much, or I can really get down there. This part is your practice. So that S in thanks is sadhana. We had a reading as we started of sadhana. Sadhana is a disciplined practice, something that you resolve to. In the recent past, I have been reading on the science of gratitude. 
and in the end of a particular article that summarized some research of how does gratitude change your brain and your body, therefore, here, step up and step down, take the time, or do something different on the other side. The encouragement was the establishment of a gratitude practice. And that looks different for each of us. Here, I'm stepping to the outside leg on the block, and I'm using it to ask for a range and going between warrior one front and back leg. So at first, I want to step the inside leg back. I'm trying to make sure here that we're doing something different for each side so we don't tire one side, that we save our energy and keep coming back. This back leg can come to something simple. It can draw up and in. When we're here, the idea is not to hike the hip, but to keep the hip drop while we lift the ribs. Let's step the leg back and just notice range. So in a roundabout way, we are challenging the front leg. It's not just about the moving leg. If we lift that knee, we can bring the leg across. We can take the leg out. And we can notice the core work involved when we are established in our foundation a little differently than normal or a little bit higher. So all of a sudden, that standing ankle is on a little bit more. This is to our advantage. As we come back to center, we're stepping back. But this time, I'm going to encourage us to lean in. And as we lean in the weight of our head and counterbalance the weight of the back leg, we might find that we can go further. Now, as we are aiming further, if we want to go further yet, I'm going to encourage that we wiggle the back leg further, and we're going to try two things, right? Strengthening the foundation. And the chair can push down and forward. And when it pushes down and forward with this longer stance, what happens is this greater ask, this engagement of the deep hip flexor, a strengthening for the lower back from the front side of the body. We can tone that area a little bit more by coming and going this way. We're going to lift the back heel. And if you like your stance, please stick to it, coming and going so that the heel makes it to the floor. But if you feel that you can take on a little bit more of this literal hip opening, Consider taking the back leg that little bit further so the heel won't make it to the floor, and we're going to slowly come and go. We can take the outside arm up and lift the rib cage. We can uh, enhance this uh, open chest, lung capacity. We can push constantly with the hand at the chair so it has a purpose. And interesting that the more we push with the hand at the chair, the more the back heel and the calf take up the strength work that we're aiming for. Let's try this one more time. Then the idea is to step forward and step down. So I'm sliding the back leg forward to step down. Turn the block so that it is um, narrow. If you can comfortably, it is fine to leave it medium or wide. But if you pick up the inner edges of your feet and catch hold of the block and then roll the soles of the feet to the floor, use that to return to your Tadasana understanding, awareness. I want to lift the arches of the feet. So T, Tadasana, thanks. So we um, have beautiful language that reminds us um, important things across generations that we find meaningful. Turn the palms up, drop the elbows, keep lifting the ribs away from the pelvis. He said, mountain pose is the pose that all other poses want to simulate. The actions of mountain is the sense of lift. Feel with the kneecaps or the arms here, not just the arches of the feet, You'll find the lift through the lower belly, the pelvic floor, the front body, each part. And then anchor with the back body. There's always the counterbalance. We also hear that gratitude is the mother of all virtues, said by Cicero, known across generations of humanity. 
take the time to the arms folded through and just notice again where can we ask for that sense of lift. I can lift the other eight toes while the big toe anchors, the big toe mouth and anchors. I can still lift the arches of the feet. I can still feel that I'm responsible to lift the ribs away from the rib cage. And therein lies the work that's in front to keep focusing on the lift. Inhale and open. So remembering the foundation will drive all of what we're asking for. Yeah, and gratitude and in yoga. We can take the chair to the other side. You are welcome to turn around. We're going to do all the things with repetition over here on the side. So at first, I'm going to turn the block low. And I'm going to use it. Uh, I'm going to do the work without and then with. So the block is optional, yeah? I want to bring the outside knee up across. And then I'm going to take it behind. I can tap the floor, I can sit into it, I can come more into this curtsy. How low is your practice? And up and across. So as you are exploring the range, notice that what we are really asking for is a non-weight bearing break for most of that movement, and then the strengthening pattern for the ground. While you're here, you pause and practice internal rotation, external rotation from this angle. Uh, the interesting, um, the interesting thing that happens in the standing leg is how we shift our weight to the inner ankle more and then to the outer ankle to just compensate for where the weight is. All right, wonderful. Let's repeat with the option of stepping up onto the block. So as you step the outside leg back, decide how far up, yeah? And what we're asking for is to draw the knee up and in. And then to come into this tapping and any amount of this curtsy, so we're going behind us and across, in front of us and across. Exactly, and behind us and across. The only thing I wish were different is that maybe the chair was higher especially for the taller folks, yeah? So hang in there, you're working hard and you're being careful. This time, as you are ready to go back, we're gonna lean in, leaning into life, and taking that leg any amount so that we use what we can that's available, yeah, to ask him for more. As you arrive, I want to make sure that everybody is able to anchor the back leg. And if you're not able to anchor the back leg, then wiggle it a little bit further. Um, or if you want to ask for more, but make sure that you have the access of pressing down and forward. So I'm here at the corner of the chair. And we could just stay here. We could stay here and push and recognize that the push of the hand translates to what happens here in this hip, but especially the back half. So if you are ready, like on the other side, we're going to lift and lower the back heel. If you're ready to do more, and it's not about getting the heel to the floor, but wiggling the back leg so that we open up the tongue the psoas, we can take the arm high, create more space on that side of the body. Very nice, everyone. Try two more. Beautiful. Let's try a different uh, way of transitioning out of this position. I just want to make sure that I give access to this to everyone. If I turn the back leg and then walked it closer underneath me, it is another way to easily step down. So as we um, learn about different creative ways to use our props, then it, we, we want to have options. All right. So here we are on the other side. We want to step up. And as I step up, I want to bring that back knee up. And we already got some of the work in, but we need to spend time on this side. So we're going to try not only internal and external rotation, but now that we can feel our freedom, we can also try a figure eight sideways, around and in, and around and up. In practicing asymmetrical work, we are able to tell that sometimes one side um, is more willing, 
So we want to use what we practice to recognize where to back off and where to ask for more. Let's come into this hip hinge. Let's drop well, 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 flat. Let's try that one more time. Here we go. In. And then coming in to go back. Very nice, everyone. Push into the chair. Stand nice and tall. Take the arm high. So we spent time on each side. When you're ready, we'll turn the back foot out. We'll walk the foot underneath us. And as it gets underneath the center of gravity, then it's time to step down. So now, again, please, we're going to hold on to the block. And this time, I'd like for us to rest the hands at the chair. So I'm going to turn and face the chair. And holding on to the block by picking up the inner edges of the feet, rolling the over to the floor, lifting the arches of the feet, and maybe the other eight toes, and reaching down with the hands so I want to bear down. And what happens here is this broadening of the chest, this lengthening of the tailbone down, this um, access to more lift in the front body. I bear down, and therefore I can lift up. Yeah, nice. And slowly release. Many ways to use mountain pose. Can we keep our hands just floating at the chair? And as we lift up onto our toes, we can maybe like bring the block with us. So I hope you notice that today we spent a little extra time really focusing on strengthening the foundation. Take a time and slowly come down. We'll use the chair more purposefully now. I want to lift the front of the feet, perhaps bring the block with, and really bear down, not just to um, stay steady and feel reassured in the balancing act, but to perhaps lift the block with a little bit more energy, lift through the front body with a little bit more energy, add more intensity to action in the outline. And release. Wonderful. Take the time now and turn the chair. The chair is going to face forward. And I'm going to move the block out of the way and place it here in my chair. It's going to be an option. While I have the chair and the block in the chair, I'm going to take the strap and hook the chair. So if you're not, um, able to hook an arm of the chair or the back of the chair like I'm doing, you might be able to hook the seat of the chair, but the, the strap is optional and you might be able to hook your foot. That is also a wonderful way to use the same action. I am hooking the chair and I'm taking the strap behind me and I'm holding on with the back hand. Where I'm trying to get to when it's time is to be able to take the strap and extend the arm and have something to push into. So we'll talk about the benefit of that, but for now, I want to have a steady place. I'm going to hold on to the strap. I'm going to hold on to the chair. I'm standing behind the chair and beside the chair, slightly behind. So the options, I could put my foot in the seat of the chair. If that is too much, then I'm gonna encourage that you take the block and put it down and in its tall form, you have a similar place. If you find that your body may be willing to do more, then you can put your foot in the chair with the block underneath. We're going to use the options of tree pose and practice this preparation. I want to bear down into my legs and I want to pull up. And then I want to take the arm behind me into its tree pose position and reach the branch well up. So I'm going to slide and tuck. Some folks may find that, you know, just getting here to shoulder height is enough for me and I can still press up and get all of those actions. If you are able to extend the arm and keep pressing up, an interesting thing begins to happen. 
though the arm is pressing up, we can guide the head of the humerus into the shoulder joint, and it actually is very kind on the um, shoulder, shoulder joint in general, what happens in that joint. Take the time and explore, can I lift my hand off the back of the chair because I'm so grounded into these limbs, and can I come into this position another K, right? Reminding ourselves of the importance of kindness. Bear down into your legs and pull them toward each other. Notice the freedom that it gives your body. How perhaps the arms feel lighter, but how the core turns on a little bit more. Take the time and release. Step down. Very nice. We can walk around to the other side, or we can move the chair. If your block is in the chair, be careful. So it doesn't drop onto your toes. And at first, we are taking the strap as we stand behind and slightly to the side. We're taking it behind us. We're adjusting to what this hip can manage. Right. And as we get our bearings, we decide the height, the distance, the proximity to the chair, we're gonna bear down and pull the legs into each other. We're going to slide the hand along the strap and pause here to just press up, just to notice. The bearing down, the heels are pressing up and the core turns on a little bit more energy. If you are comfortable to extend the arm any amount, here we are to that K on the other side, pulling the legs toward each other, feeling the center of our core the inner strength that we keep finding. When I was a new teacher, uh, thinking about all the things that came from my teachers, I heard, you are stronger than you think. When we get to connect to that sensation of the inner strength of the core of our being, we are reminded of that subconsciously all the time. We just want to bring it to the front of our brain. And slowly step down. All right, wonderful. We can leave this strap where it is. It's not in our way. We will, um, I'm going to turn my chair to the side. I'd like you to keep your chair where it is um, because I think you'll be fine, but I want to be able to show. And we'll take the block in hand. So we're going to work our way back to sitting. Block in hand in front of you as you come back to a seated position. And then placing the block between the knees. And then turning so that you are sideways to the chair. So I, I want to make sure that we come into a comfortable twist. And if we sit further back on the seat of the chair, then the amount of twist we manage is, is smaller. So if that is what you need, please be kind to yourself. If we are to slide forward, then that turn to catch the back of the chair requires more rotation. A twist is always a wonderful counterbalance. It's a great recovery, and it is part of maintaining the health of the spine. Your feet uh, hip width apart, the legs react to holding on to the block. Block is optional. But at first, let's return to that H, heart opening, and lifting the ribcage, turn toward the chair. As you lower the arms, catch hold of the chair. As you keep the elbows lifted, it helps us to stay lifted through the torso. Your neck can, your head can be centered with your um, chest. You can turn your head back behind if you want to involve the upper part of your spine. But just notice the inclination of one hand to push and the other one to pull. We want to maximize on that. So I am sitting sideways to the back of the chair. Side, so the back of the chair is beside me. Yeah. The back hand is going to reach down and rest in the seat of the chair and help prop, take the load off the spine. Notice how the legs turn on a little bit more. There is still a push, that's the pushing hand. There's still a pull, the arm in front is the pulling hand. 
as we draw the navel to the spine, as we lift the rib cage, you might be able to find a little bit more rotation. This is a strengthening twist. Let's stay one more breath and let's do one more thing. As you inhale to slowly come out of this pose, remove the block and put it between your feet just to put it at the floor. And take the outside leg 45 degrees to the side. Return to catching hold of the back of the chair. Bear into the legs with the ribs. And just notice what is different. Where is there a lift? What is open and accessible to you? Follow your intuition. Reaching down to reach up. Let's stay with the breath. As you exhale, firm the legs. And as you inhale, slowly come out of it. Very nice. Before we do the other side, sit well back in your chair. Press into the chair with uh, your back. Let your upper arms bear into the side of the chair. As your feet push the floor with your gaze, and as your arms continue to press the sides of the chair, move the ribcage, shoulder blades, heart lifting up and away. Let your head follow your spine. This is baby fish. It strengthens the back body, the good posture muscles, and reminds us of this capacity to be open. That it takes a little bit of strength and resolve, actually, and then release. As we get to the other side, uh, we want to find walk between the knees. I'm going to adjust my chair so I can stay with you. You are simply going to swivel to the other side. Nothing fancy to do other than to arrive in just the same way. Decide how far back or forward you want to be so that the amount of twist is similar. Adequate. Lift your heart, lift your arms, turn, catch hold the back of the chair, and keep focusing on that sense of lift. How the arms push forward. There is a strength work here. Now the legs firm to the floor. We are sitting sideways to the back of the chair. So the chair, the back of the chair is 90 degrees from the direction that my toes are pointing. When you are ready, take the back hand and slide it down, bear down. Notice how there is more lift through the um, abdominal wall that is apparent. Notice the lower abdominals that lift, yes. And decide where you're looking. If your head stays square with your shoulders, if you're going to turn that a little bit more, this is your practice. Stay with the breath. So as we make our practice comprehensive, it will help us to stay a little longer, just to notice all those great ways that we are present and on. Take the time as you inhale to remove the block and put it down. Take that leg, outside leg, 45 degrees to the side. Bring the hand back and just feel the change of the foundation and how it would affect the lift, how the pelvic cord lifts. For everything else, stay constant in the upper body, but the lower body has some shifts and changes, such as left. One more breath. And as you exhale, slowly return. So as you return to sitting in a symmetrical way, I'll turn here and stay here. As you sit comfortably, whether that means sitting back in your chair or sitting forward and feeling the strength of your core and your back holding you up, Turn your palms up, bring the index fingers to the thumb tips. This mudra is called Yana Mudra. Rest the arms comfortably. Drop your gaze and feel the energy of your body. Yana Mudra connects us to everything around. It helps us to appreciate the inner connection outside of ourselves way that we are important in the world through all those interconnections that we take up space we are meant to be here there is purpose here's our dharma 
in the same shape, turning the palms down. This is Chin Mudra. And if you rest your hands somewhere at your legs, just pause and feel the shift of the energy. Chin Mudra guides our inner reflection, the interconnectedness of this vast inner body. Energy that changes when we focus within. The gratitude that comes to recognize the layers, the spirals that go. In reading research on how yoga changes the brain, looking at the gray matter that grows in the frontal cortex of the body, of the, the mind, of the brain, this is the area that um, encompasses cognitive thinking, decision making, feelings of being open and ready to see and be present, to be responsive, to make sense of. It increases all of those feel-good hormones, serotonin, dopamine. What diminishes is the reactiveness of the amygdala, the part of your brain in the very base of the back that is connected to how we are designed for survival, it's a good thing. But sometimes life hijacks that area of the brain and it becomes a habit to be reactive. So the amygdala actions decrease and the prefrontal cortex actions in the gray matter increases when we have a regular practice of gratitude about that. Bring your hands to your heart and as you take your practice off the mat, into this beautiful week of Thanksgiving that sometimes has its challenges for each of us, no matter what. Keep coming back to what is accessible to you. Your breath that helps you calm and present. Movement that helps you release negative tension, the energy that you just want to move along. And then leave space to be open, to take in what is in front of us, and more importantly, people who are in front of us. Thank you for your presence and great gratitude to you all. Namaste. Namaste.